While many of our most thrilling experiences have happened in Africa, other unforgettable days were spent in the South Pacific Islands. Martin and Osa Johnson lecturing on their travels to exotic places. Forgotten by many, they never will be in their hometown of Chinoot. The museum opened June 11, 1961, and uh, yeah, 50 years later, here we are. For 22 of those years, Conrad Froelich has been director of the Martin and Osa Johnson Safari Museum in Chinoot. A museum devoted to a pair of lives lived very much in full. They led a, a life of adventure and travel to exotic locations, and it's romance as well. I mean, here was a married couple, and that was their work together. You will hear the angry grunt of the hippo and the roar of the beautiful Murchison Falls. And then the mysterious pygmies. They documented their travels and adventures extensively in movies, lectures, and books. They not only showed what they encountered, the, the landscape, the wildlife, the native peoples, but they also showed themselves, how they lived, how they traveled, and the adventures they were having. And the savages are cannibalistic as they were thousands of years ago. Their first film, 1918, Cannibals of the South Seas. They lived among the cannibals and headhunters for two years. The Johnsons made more than a dozen films, most in Africa. Congorilla, the first sound movie shot entirely in Africa. They were the first to photograph gorillas in the wild. After that, their best known trip. Their flying safari, 1933 to 34, it broadened their ability to document wildlife and native peoples and, and the, the lands of Africa. Two years, two planes flying all over Africa. They were the first to fly over Mount Kenya and Mount Kilimanjaro. Many of their wildlife pictures cannot be duplicated today. They saw sights few would ever see, and Martin knew it. Animals all over the plains. There must have been several hundred square miles of game just exactly as you see in this picture. It was the most marvelous sight. I never expect to find anything so wonderful again. Back home, they were greeted by large movie and lecture crowds and heavy book sales. They were as well known as any couple in the country. This book was written in 1942, 20 Modern Americans. So number one in the book is Walt Disney. Number two, then the Martin Johnsons, bringing maps to life. That book published five years after Martin's death in a plane crash. Osa took her husband home to Chanute. She would join him 16 years later. They left behind a record of times and people long gone, what used to be, and for the future, a glimpse of the past. They saw themselves as creating a record of a vanishing natural and cultural world you know, 70, 80, 90 years ago, and they wanted to create a record of that for future generations, and that's essentially what they have done.